Hello and welcome. It's Jane Adsed Grant, an executive coach facilitating your independent thinking for clarity, confidence and creativity so that you can achieve more for yourself and your business. Today I'm delighted to introduce you to Hilda Barrett. Hilda is an experienced human resources director within the high-tech industry. She is passionate about how individuals and teams thrive. Hilda was one of the first to achieve her master's degree in positive psychology. Welcome, Hilda. Morning. Great to talk to you. You too. So, Hilda, I wondered if we could start off by uh, me asking you, what are some of the findings from positive psychology that you have found about resilience and its relationship to performance? Well, traditionally, psychology mainly studied what was wrong with people. If you think about it as a continuum, it was the naught to minus 10, the times in people's lives when they actually were not resilient or performing well. Then in the year 2000, the head of the American Psychological Association, Martin Seligman, said, let's really put our weight behind the study of how people flourish and thrive, the plus one to plus 10 on that continuum. So positive psychology was born. Well, it always baffles me that we went to the moon before we really studied this. The good news is that we now have lots of findings from positive psychology that are science and evidence-based that show us how to develop our resilience and our performance. Thankfully, these are skills that we can all learn and develop. So one of the findings that's really fascinating is that research shows there's approximately 17% of the population flourishing. Yikes, that's that's really low. Mm. So they've studied those flourishing people and learned that they have a high ratio of positive emotions. They experience more positive emotions than negative ones, more than three to one as a ratio. So yes, they do experience negative emotions, but they bounce back quickly and they don't get locked or lost in those negative emotions. So it's really exciting that the evidence is showing that our positive emotions aren't just frivolous. They're actually really good for us. They broaden and they build us, according to the top researcher, Barbara Fredrickson. So first of all, in the moment, they're actually broadening us. And that's the opposite to negative emotions, which kind of narrow down our focus to the threat right in front of us. Positive emotions are doing the opposite. Literally in experiments using eye tracking equipment, we see much more. They broaden our vision. We see more possibilities. They expand our usual perspective so we can step back and take in the big picture. So by seeing more, we get more ideas. What we might do next, we're more creative. By seeing the big picture, we see more connections, a major advantage when we're working in complex business worlds. Another piece of research is fascinating. It shows they actually undo the negative impact of stress. So in research subjects who have been stressed and then experienced positive emotion, they return to normal in all their physiological measures much faster than those who didn't experience positive emotions. So positive emotions also give us greater mental clarity. And we see that from neuroscience evidence actually making our brains work better. So if that's what they're doing in the moment, then there's a cumulative effect of all of this broadening, and that's building us. And research shows all sorts of benefits, like our close and trusting relationships with others are better, we're more resilient, we bounce back back, even a reduction in headaches, stomach pains, they actually improve our vagal tone. For the scientists out there, you'll know what that is, but basically it's an index of our over, overall health, which comes from our physiology. There's also lots of evidence that shows the tonic impact of positive emotions on our body. We're talking at a physiological level, short-term, medium, and long-term. For example, they increase our immune response, so we're healthier. They lower our risk of coronary heart disease and stroke and even add between four to seven years to our life. So the founder of positive psychology, Martin Seligman, has a model he calls PERMA. These are the elements that together can build resilience and performance. I'm spoiled for choice, so I I chose P from PERMA, positive emotions, to discuss first. The others are engagement, relationships, meaning and achievement.
We cover all those elements in our training. It's a very powerful cocktail. Martin Seligman's goal is to increase the percentage that are flourishing to 52% by 2052. Positive psychology has developed the insights and tools to make that possible. Helda, can you tell us a little bit of your background in relation to how you became involved <coughs> in helping others um, with greater resilience? Well, originally my career was working as a human resources director in the high-tech sector, Apple, Microsoft, Electronic Arts. My passion has always been how individuals and teams thrive. I studied everything I could find, like NLP, coaching, leadership development, OD, systems theory. Then one day I discovered that there was an MSc in positive psychology, and I was so pleased to see that psychology had now come to the table and applied its expertise and research to this area. It's new, so there are only nine MSCs in the world, and I'm really fortunate to be a pioneer to get that qualification and take these learnings back to the business world, which I do by training, coaching, and consulting. Wonderful. And so from your experience, what are the top three things that someone should know in order to increase their resilience? <clears throat> Well, the first one might seem unusual, though I gave a bit of an introduction and background at the start, and that's to increase your ratio of positive emotions. And small steps will make a big change. For example, in the moment, be grateful. There will be lots to be grateful for if you look. Our program will teach an innovative way of using biofeedback from your heart, using a small clip on your ear to your iPhone or PC to increase your positivity ratio, which is called heart math. But there are so many ways you can do it, and you can start right now. Then the second one is don't live in a stress reaction. It's bad for your body, and it's bad for your mind. Research has shown that when, when we're in a stress reaction, commonly known as that fright or flight response, we're primarily using a small part of our brain, the amygdala, which functions as the brain's alarm bell. And when we're in that response, we're focused on survival and everything that the body considers to be non-essential is just down-regulated, even the digestive system. The executive functions of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, doesn't work very well when we're stressed, which is why worry rarely yields highly resourceful solutions. We work with clients to prep before they encounter known stressful scenarios and quickly reset if they do have a stress reaction, so they can shift from solution shift to solutions instead of problems, show curiosity instead of anxiety, and creativity instead of damage control. And the third thing I would suggest is to get great sleep and recovery time. We're built to be two-thirds drive and one-third recovery each 24 hours. We're simply not built to be always on. Our sleep and recovery are essential to our resilience and performance. Just don't underestimate them. We have our delegates wear a heart rate monitor for three do days, so they get very real personal data on their balance of drive and recovery, even the quality of their sleep. So those three things were increase your ratio of positive emotions, don't live in a stress reaction, and get great sleep and recovery. Mm, fascinating. So what's the best way that we can get started? Well, what could be more important for you, your team, or the people you love than that they would flourish? So rather than leave it to chance that you might be in that 17%, positive psychology has created great resources to increase your resilience and performance. We've designed coaching and training programs for the business world. But if you'd like to start to experiment, there's a great website called Happify. H-A-P-P-I-F-Y, which I can recommend. They have a very simple user interface and easy bite-sized activities. All their work is based on positive psychology research, and they have a free as well as a subscription option. Great. I can't wait to have a look. Thank you. So, Hilda, in your experience, how long does it take for us to make the required shifts to be able to respond more resiliently to whatever our day throws at us? Well, we've seen clients make major shifts after just one day's training, which is really exciting. Mm. We also know that sustainable change takes time and practice. We aim to make this easy by using biofeedback tools, 
which you can use for five minutes three times a day. They're really gripping as you don't sit in a vacuum. Instead, you see immediate feedback from your heart on your level of achievement that you've reached in a simple graphic on your iPhone or your PC. Thankfully, we know our brains have neuroplasticity. We can rewire in a way that works well for us. All we need is powerful, regular practice. Great. So tell me, will your methods that you've described already and techniques work in any area and for anyone? Yes, and, and that's really important to me. So my specialism is in the business world, but I did my MSc dissertation on evidence supporting how they work in a variety of situations, from police, physicians, nurses, high-tech sector employees, prison, prison wardens, and pastors. Rather, could you provide us some of the real-life examples that you um, have worked with who have followed your techniques? Sure. So one of the techniques that we teach is called heart math. It's a combination of slow rhythmic breathing and positive emotion that's very well researched and has proven abilities to take our body and our mind out of that stress reaction into an optimum state. And there's some of my favorite research done with police in California. So it shows what happens during a domestic violence raid. The doors kick down, guns go up, guns go off. The policeman's heart rate has more than doubled from 80 beats per minute to 180. Now, this is a normal reaction because the body is seeking to provide all the resources he needs to meet that challenge. Then in 10 minutes, he gets his heart beat back to normal because he's trained in these techniques. His peers took an average of 60 minutes. They were six times longer. So this research was done wearing heart monitors. So we've got really strong and objective data. So they had six times the wear and tear on their system. If you think about policemen who constantly have these challenges in their work, if they don't know how to reset quickly, they may stay elevated until the next challenge and maybe never get their heart rate back to normal in the day. Well, actually, it can be like that in our days too. It may not be guns, but our challenges can have a similar impact on us. The skill of resetting quickly is a really powerful one for our resilience. In fact, the police study, in that police study, they said that one of the most important benefits of the training was the ability to reset before they went home and not carry all that stress into their home and family. You see, when we live in that stress reaction, our bodies and minds are so busy dealing with all that challenge that we just use up all our resources and that kind of exhausts us and reduces our performance. So another example comes from the head of nursing at St. Bart's Hospital London. That's Professor Kay Riley. And she was visiting a hospital in the US and was struck by their high level of compassion. She was told they attributed this to their heart math training. Well, her nurses were not seen as compassionate. But that was because when you're living in a stress reaction, you're just not likely to access your compassion. It isn't that you don't actually possess it. I love the results of her pilot program. They showed that learning these techniques reduced exhaustion by 55%, depression by 64%, anger by 37%, body aches by 37%, inadequate sleep by 45 And I mentioned earlier, you need great sleep. There were increases in peacefulness of over 100%, appreciativeness of 60% and calmness increased by 24%. This is all really strong um, research published in peer-reviewed academic, academic journals and really strong results from challenging real-life situations like the NHS in London. Mm. Goodness, it's a lot to take in and it's just fascinating to learn about the impact the positive psychology and the various techniques are having everywhere. So Hilda, if you had one secret to give about developing resilience, what would it be? It would be increase your positive emotions. Now what a wonderful prescription that <laughs> is. And really, I wouldn't say it if I didn't have oceans of science to validate it. So create a positivity portfolio. Gather the things that create positive emotion in you. It might be photos of happy times that you want to savor, your favorite music, 
Mine is Pharrell Williams singing happy. Um, look for what's right in you and in others and in any situation and focus on that. It will increase your emotional well-being and your resilience. Remember I mentioned about deep breathing, which everyone knows instinctively is important, but may forget to do. We found that lasting sustainable change in our resilience baseline comes from when we combine these two elements, positive emotion and slow rhythmic breathing. Wonderful. And you know, I love that song too. And so yeah. much that I have it as a download on my ringtone when my phone goes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, I'm going to copy that. I am going to copy that. I love it. I love the um, the 24 hour video. Oh, it's yes. Just a wonderful resource. So clever. Lovely. So Helga, what do you think are some of the common problems that people do experience in being able to develop their resilience? Well, I think it may be a lack of knowledge about how to actually develop their resilience. So they may not know that there are great options out there and they may have just lost hope that they can transform their stress into high resilience. They could be living in a constant stress reaction or lack the tools and techniques that are just a really best fit for them. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you recommend for someone to be able to overcome these challenges? Well, thankfully, resilience is something that can be built. And knowing that just changes our perspective on how we approach the challenging situations and environments we face. I've already mentioned some easy places to start. For example, focusing on deep breathing. That can be done anywhere, anytime. Nobody needs to know you're doing it. Training in heart math techniques, using biofeedback has been shown to improve resilience and well-being. The kind of statistical changes I mentioned earlier. Then there's the Happify resource that I mentioned. It's a great way to start accessing some of the research from the world of positive psychology in a really practical way. So we aim to take the evidence and science about proven approaches to the business world and create options that are fun and a best fit to each individual. Learning anything new can take time and we love working with intact teams because then the, moving, then the learning moves from being just personal to also being a team experience and they can then together create a system in the way they work that will support and reinforce how they develop their resilience their performance and their enjoyment at work sounds like a great recipe for, to me <laughs> so Helda, where can people find more information about the training that you've talked about today, your interactive program, Thriving Resiliently, Don't Just Survive, But Thrive? Um, yes, that's on our website, which is www.insighttothrive.com. So the program details are up there and I've included a link to set up a free 30-minute meeting with me and I can answer any questions that anyone may have. Fantastic. Well, Hilda, it's been a pleasure connecting with you, reconnecting. We've known each other for some years now, so it's been yes. lovely to reconnect with you and share our journeys. And um, thank you again for sharing so much. And I encourage uh, anyone listening to this audio, do take a look at those wonderful resources, Happify, that Hilda talked about, and also in particular, insighttothrive.com, where we can learn more about this wonderful program based on the scientific evidence um, of positive psychology to make a difference of how you and your teams can not just survive, but thrive. This is Joan Adsedgrant, an executive coach facilitating your independent thinking for clarity, confidence, and creativity. Until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>